and welcome to lesson 20.2 in the Python tutorial series. Uh, this lesson is just an extension of lesson 20.1, which introduced the len and in statements. Uh, the general format and syntax was discussed in lesson 20.1, so if you're unfamiliar with what the len and in statements do, you should watch that video first before looking at this one. This video is going to take the len function and the in statement and apply it to a uh, program that we develop so that you can see where the real power in these statements are in your programs. So lesson 20.2, let's go ahead and get started and code ourselves a program using the len and in statements. So I'm gonna head over to our programming window here on the right and let's develop a small program together just so you can see how these things will be applied in future programs that you do. I want to create a program that checks to see if a user inputted a vowel or not. So I'm going to start by commenting the title of my program here, and this will be the Vowel Checker Program. And of course, the first thing that I'm going to do is print a welcome message to my user. So I'm going to say print Welcome to the Vowel Checker. And maybe, there we go, something like that. Um, yeah, I like to have the headers on my program. And so I'm going to ask the user to input something, and I'm going to save that in response, or a variable called response. And the question is going to be, or the statement is going to be, enter a letter in the alphabet. So the user is going to enter their letter. Let's check this by uh, saving it and running it. And let's just make sure it's working up to this point. All right, we got our window positioned here. And they're going to enter A. And th there we go. So far, no, no big problems. And if I check response, I can see it, it holds the character A, the string A. So we're good. Now what we need to do is make a quick check. In order to do that, I'm going to use the in statement. I'm going to go to the top of my program and initialize uh, initialize variables that we're going to be using in this program. I need to check and see, is the user's response a vowel or not? In order to do this, I need to know what the vowels are. So I'm going to create a variable vowels and set it equal to A-E-I-O-U. And I don't know if the user is going to enter a capital letter or a lowercase letter, so I'm also going to have A-E-I-O and U. This variable here will represent my uh, list of all the vowels in the alphabet. If I come over to the Python shell, if the user enters, say, C, and I check in A-E-I-O-U, a -E -I -O -U, I'm going to get false. If the user enters, let's say, a capital E, and I check this in A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O-U, I'm going to get true. If the user is entering only one letter, and it's a vowel, it's got to be in the string right here, so our in check will work. If, if they're entering more than one letter, then we might have a problem, but we'll get to that and we'll stop that from happening. So now I'm just going to write an if statement, and I'm going to say if the response is in vowels, then we're going to print percent %s is a vowel. So we know their response is a vowel if we get a return of true in response in vowels, just like we did over here. The only difference is we're using variables that store string instead of just writing the strings out. So let's check this code here and see, is this working? So I'm going to press F5 to run it, enter a letter in the alphabet, and let's start by entering W. And nothing happens. That's good. Now, let's try E, and we get the statement E is a vowel. Perfect. Otherwise, we're going to print percent %s is not a vowel. Because there's only two choices here. 
It's either a vowel or it, is, it isn't. So if response is a vowel, we print that it is a vowel. In all other cases, it's not a vowel. So let's check our program now. We check E. E is still working. Let's check W. W is showing up as not a vowel. So we're in pretty good shape here in our vowel checker. But we still need to add a few more features to make this program a little more seamless. Okay, I've cleared my screen on the left. I had a little computer glitch, so um, the screen on the left was cleared. But let's continue refining this program right here. Right now, my program, let's uh, make sure that it's running correctly still, since uh, that window closed on me. I'm going to check it with E. That still works. Perfect. I'm going to check with W. That still works. Now let's say the user isn't following instructions. They enter POI as their letter. Right now the program is going to recognize that as not a vowel because POI does not show in this string right here. In fact, we could enter EEI and get the same thing because this is looking for any string in here that's EEI, and of course that's not in there. Our program is designed to handle only one letter, so we need to make sure that we limit the user to entering only one letter. I'm going to do this with a len statement. Before my if statement here, I'm going to do an initial check, and I want to check to see if the length of response is not equal to 1. This means it could be equal to zero, it could be equal to two, it could be equal to a million. If the length of the response is not equal to one, then I'm going to print, please enter only one letter. Thank you. And then I'm going to change this if to an elif so that these checks are all linked to one another. So the first check we're going to make is, is the length of the user's response one? If it's 1, I know I can do a check, but if it's 0, if it's 4, if it's 8, I know I can't. If it is equal to 1, then we'll continue with our vowel checks. So let's test this program and see how it works out here. I'm going to start by not entering any information at all. I'm just going to hit enter. And I get the appropriate message. Fantastic. Please enter only one letter. Now let's try this with EEI. Please enter only one letter. And Anytime I enter anything, Steve, anything that's not equal to only one letter will have a length of greater than one, and anything that's blank will have a length of zero. That length statement allows us to kind of control what the user is able to input. So now we have a uh, length check there. And let's go ahead and take our program and throw it into a loop that will continually check until the program until the user decides they want to quit. That's pretty easy. I'm going to come up here to the very top of my program and use a while statement. I'm going to say while is running is equal to y. I'll have to initialize that variable at the top as well, so I'm going to say is running will start with a value of y. This is my key, this is my uh, indication to me that I've got a variable called is running and it's set to y that lets me know my loop is running. If that ever changes to anything else, the program will quit. When it gets to this first check, it will check to see is running equal to y, and it is, and it will run the loop. Because of this, I'm going to have to indent everything by one block, and there's a real easy way to do this. I'm just going to highlight all the code under my while statement, hit tab, and everything tabs over appropriately. The next, after the loop is over, I'm going to set is running equal to an input statement. And that is, would you like to run this program again? And let's tell them they can enter Y or N. So now, if the user enters, say, n, then is running is not equal to this y anymore, and the loop will break. Another check that I might want to make is or is running is equal to an uppercase y. This way, my program will 
not care if the user is using a capital Y or a lowercase y, it's going to be one of those two things. Let's try this program now and see if it works. Enter a letter in the alphabet. Let's try ER. Please enter only one letter. Thank you again. Good. Would you like to run this program again? Yes, I would. So I'm going to enter Y. Since is running is equal to Y, this while loop will start over. Enter a letter in the alphabet. Let's try E. E is a vowel. Would you like to run this program again? Yes. Let's try O. O is a vowel. Would you like to run this program again? Yes. Let's try F. F is not a vowel. Would you like to run this program again? Now let's throw a curveball at our program. Let's run it and let's enter not a letter but a number. Let's try 5. Tell me 5 is not a vowel, which I guess is technically true. But let's make a check, one final check, um, some polish on our program, and make sure that the user is not entering a number. So no, we do not want to run this program again. The program breaks correctly. I'm going to create a variable up here called numbers. And the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. Those are the numbers that the user is able to enter. So if the response is in vowels, we're going to print that it's in a vowel. If response is in numbers, that is the user entered in a number, we're going to print percent %s is a number Please enter only letters. If the user enters more than one number now, let's say they would enter 13, that'll get caught by this length check here because the length of the string 14 is 2. And I'll get the message, please enter only one letter. Do I want to run again? Yes. So let's try and enter the number 6. Oh, I see I have an error in my print statement because it says percent %s is a number. Would you like to run again? Let's say no. And what I forgot on my print statement here, I'm sure some of you probably caught this, was to add the response so that it links this percent %s to the response variable. Let's go ahead and test that again. Enter a letter in the alphabet 6. 6 is a number. Please enter only letters. Would I like to run again? Yes. Let's try a 0. 0 is a number. Let's run again and try U. U is a vowel. Would I like to run this program again? No. And the program ends. This is just a quick program that we developed together that uses the length statement and uses the in statement. In particular, the length statement is really powerful here because it checks really an infinite number of cases where the user enters something other than what we want. If they enter nothing at all, it can catch that. And if they enter too much, it can catch that. When you create menus in your some of the adventure games that we've made up to this point right here, adding a length check can make sure if you say enter A to go on an adventure, you can add a length statement to your if checks and make sure that the user is entering only one character. So you can go back and work on some of your earlier challenge programs and add this to make sure that the user is entering only valid information. Now that you've had a chance to see how the len and in statements can impact some of your earlier programs, let's go ahead and check out this week's challenge program. So this lesson's challenge program is to create what I call length checker the game. And the way length check checker the game works is it's going to ask me to enter a, a letter or a word that is a certain number of letters long and that number of letters is randomized. On the screen I can see that it's asking me for a word that's four letters long, but it's telling me that I can't use the letter E in my response. Can I do it? So it's a, it's a challenge. The word I'm going to enter is wood. So let's enter W-O-O-D. You've entered a word with four letters and no E's. Great, so I won. Do I want to run this program again? Sure. I want you to enter a word that is five letters long. Don't use the letter E. Now, let's go ahead and try wood again, W-O-O-D. This is going to be incorrect because it's only four letters long. 
I knew I could stump you. Would has four letters. Would I like to run it again? Yes. The third case that can happen, in this case it's looking for a word that has four letters without the letter E. Let's enter the word uh, jive. J-I-V-E. Well, it's the correct length, but it's got an E in it. I knew I could get you. Jive has an E in it. So there's four possibilities that this program checks. Uh, it will create a random number and ask you to enter a word that, that's that is that many letters long. It will then check to see, is there an E in your response? And if there is an E, then you lose because there's an E in your word. Then it will check to see, is the length of your response equal to the random number that it generated? And if it is, and it's already passed the check that says there's no E's, then you've won. And then the third check is, if the length of your response is different than the length of the randomly generated number, then we know that you've lost the game. So that's kind of the idea of the game right here. And then I've thrown it in a continuous loop. So a word that's two letters long, let's try me. No, nope, me has an E in it, let's try it again. Four letters long, let's uh, say, gosh, this is why you shouldn't do a, a live tutorial here. I've been drawing a blank on a four letter word. So let's say, uh, soda, S-O-D-A, there we go. So the game keeps uh, running, and then when you wanna end the program, do you want this to run again? No, and the program breaks correctly. In order to run this program, you'll definitely need to use the length and in statements. And, you know, I wish you the best of luck on creating this particular program. As always, if you have any questions about what you're doing or something's not working right for you, you can go ahead and leave your questions in the comments. You can copy and paste your code to the comment as well. And I will help you out any way that I can to make sure that you have a fully functioning program. As always, thank you so much for watching the Python tutorial series, and have a great day.